now you can see the slides it is known as temporary implantable nitinol device and uh, previously in generation one it is known as tint tind and now uh, the another biggest shareholder in the pharmacy industry olympus has got the technology and they have renamed as itint and they have also uh, made few changes like for example they have improved the the, the struts or the threads in the itint and the it's almost like a second generation itint and uh, it has a good value it has uh, test, stood the test of the time lot of articles and publications on pipeline and uh, so we have discussed the euro lift and this is the prostatic embolization which i'm not going to discuss because this is more for um, a euro radiologist to present but if somebody has any questions on prostatic uh, artery embolization i'm quite happy to answer uh, it's a very good technology for example very large prostate 150cc 200cc patient presented with bleeding and not fit for big surgeries like enucleation those are the patients where prostatic artery embolization is quite good we need a quite dedicated uh, ct urogram so that we get the anatomy of the vasculature uh, older men sometimes the vasculature to prostate may be quite atherosclerotic then your embolization won't um, adequately read the prostatic gland if the vessels are good if it is appropriately embolized especially as long as we are doing a super selective embolization prostate will lose its blood supply as simple as that just like embolizing a bleeding vessel after pcnl etc and they will have really a good outcome the side effects could be like any of the uh, the branches to the lower part of the bladder may get involved and if it is uh, inappropriately done you can get ischemia of the trigone ischemia of the lower ureter requiring stenting etc but appropriate embolization will give definitely good result we have discussed resume quite in detail and now we are going to discuss the itin as you can see itin is a, a simple device it's a temporary implantation it works maybe for five to seven days after that the implant is removed so patient has the no fear of keeping an implant in the rest of the life that's one of the main advantage of the item so as i said it's a second generation one uh, all the three prongs were now has got two filaments braided and there is a tongue like another equipment which uh, takes care of small median lobes or floor in my view, ITIN is very good for patients suffering from high blood and neck. Young patients, 40-year-old, 50-year-old, high blood and neck, but don't want to go for blood and neck incision, wishes to preserve the ejaculation, preserve the erection. ITIN is a good device which creates nice three cuts at 12 o'clock, 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock. It's a temporary device. It's a bit of a pain those five days when the implant is kept in the place. But we have a good cocktail of like NSAIDs with some maybe steroids and uh, painkillers so that uh, that five days once passed, once it is removed, it gives a very good opening of the blood and neck. So any patients with pure blood and neck or maybe prostates up to 40 cc, it has a role to play. Once the prostate becomes more meaty, once it reaches 60 cc or more than that, we need to think about Eurolift if not resume. And how it works? The IT is placed on one uh, strut at 12 o'clock, the other two at 5 and 7 o'clock with an anchoring leaflet. The anchoring leaflet helps in creating a kind of uh, ablation of the median lobe if it is a small median lobe. And also it helps in immobilizing the implant. As you see here, the main work is done by the horizontal segment of the itin. The, the slanting segment has not much role. So there is a good cuff of tissue preserved. So no way the opening is affecting the ejaculatory ducts or the sphincters. So sphincter, ejaculation, veru are completely protected. So this is how it will look inside the bladder before implantation. I will show them in the future slides. So you will get a 7 o'clock cut, 12 o'clock cut and 5 o'clock cut. Initially, maybe for 5 to 10 patients, you may need to use some short anesthesia like uh, laryngeal mask anesthesia or sedation to keep the implant. But once you gain the technology, how to place it, you can do that under local anesthesia. So that's the main advantage of having the procedure. Patient can walk in, have the implant done and then walk home. They can prevent anesthesia. So it can be completely done under local anesthesia. 
and uh, doing under uh, uh, rigid cystoscope is the advisable one we have got this nice guidelines in 2019 there is a recent edition in september 2022 which allows us to do the itin placement in a controlled manner or in a supervised manner which means you can't just like that do itin for your patients and discharge them back to remote areas you need to keep a tab on them and you need to make a data and you may have to publish it adequ adequately it's not something every unit can start it has to be done maybe like a university centers or teaching hospitals this is a good source to start and um, they got a um, lot of studies like medical technology o1 o2 o6 studies which consistently showed that the ips score qmax were showing good amount of improvement and uh, they got three year follow up and uh, five year follow up the medical technology o1 study was done with the first generation itin showing a good improvement of the ips score and stable for almost like three years with good improvement of qmax for three years and uh, the medical technology o2 study was done in the second generation device as i said it has got that extra tongue for the small medial lobes again they have got a uh, standard inclusion criteria exclusion criteria and these are all the end points which shows a good improvement of the ips score and qmax over almost like 3 years follow up so there is a good evidence to back the itint also and um, improvement in the post viral residue improvement in the quality of life and preservation of the sexual function all the three devices whatever i discussed today it will not affect erection and ejaculation that's the main beauty and that's why they are in the market and um, now we have the medical technology o6 study which is a much more advanced study with a little bit of wider inclusion criteria and we got the 6 months interim results showing again a good improvement in the ipss and quality of life the the one thing i want all the delegates to understand is none of these three will be equivalent to turp but if you think about turp patient definitely needs one or the other form of anesthesia whether it's regional or ga patient requires uh, appropriate resection irrigation uh, definite one night stay and even if you are doing a day care turp patient will go home with a catheter with removal maybe in a day or two but all other three resources what we have discussed there is not much anesthesia all our day unit procedures now we are trying to move all these procedures into outpatient clinics where patients will be having a flexi or then suitable they can go for euro lift just in a normal clinic environment and uh, so that's the main movement so that releases the pressure in the theater so i mean these things may not be very appropriate for the countries like pakistan but uh, releasing the theater capacity releasing the inpatient capacity is, is a very big ask as far as the nhs is concerned and uh, this is the medical technology o3 study which is now published again the same good results for exam purpose if uh, the trainees are able to say that itend has got this medical technology o1 o2 o3 o6 studies which got appropriate improvement in ipss qol and post viral risk that's more than enough i don't think anybody will ask the individual values and these are all the publications for itin and uh, improvement in the ipss and qmax and yes the technology is here to stay and uh, but for very selective patients with prostate in the region of 40 cc or less than that or patients with pure median low problems or like uh, small median low problems or bladder neck issues so yeah we can discuss any questions on itin before we go for the last uh, small presentation on temporary prostatic implants yeah uh i think there are few questions about uh, the question is about uh, average about how much time is required for an itin procedure approximately yeah in your early learning curve you will be very precautious because you want to be sure doubly sure on the placement but if you think the procedure wise all we are doing is we are passing the whole implant on with cystoscopic uh, working element or working channel and once the element is deployed we are making sure the three prongs are nicely placed 12 o'clock 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock and taking them into the prostatic cavity once we are happy we are just removing the cystoscope so once you are experienced 
placement of this is just like placing a catheter it should not take more than five minutes to ten minutes time and at any time if the patient has difficulty in voiding after placement of the itin you can pass a 12 friend silicon catheter by the side of the implant and it can go into the bladder and drain the bladder also as i said this implant will be left for five to seven days that's where it opens up the cavity that five to seven days are a little bit crucial patient will have quite symptomatic storage symptoms bleeding etc yeah so this is one of the questions asked by Ahmed Junaid about the worsening of storage symptoms in the initial few days so typically they last uh, a week 10 yeah. days or uh, it, longer? It lasts as long as the ITIN is in place. So if you are keeping for, ideally, if you leave it for seven days, longer it is left, maximum is seven days, you will get a better cut. So if it is left for seven days, patient will be symptomatic for seven days. Um, in our experience, some patients who can't tolerate, they will really beg to remove the ITIN even in fourth day or fifth day. And they also have a good adequate amount of opening. So if patient is comfortable, leave it for at least seven days. If the patient is very symptomatic, you can remove it from fourth day onwards. I'm sure that the patient may not be very comfortable, but is it uh, any point in leaving a suprapubic catheter during this phase? Uh, uh, yeah, these are our, our aim is to make it as much minimal as possible by placing a suprapubic. Yes, in one school, we can think suprapubic is not a big surgery. Just uh, put a suprapubic catheter and empty. It will take care of the, of the drainage. Sometimes even we can place suprapubic just for the sake of safety. We can even place a spigot in it, ask the patient to void urine normally. And if he struggles, we can ask him to use suprapubic catheter. But the beauty is this item won't cause any voiding problems. Patients passing urine will be absolutely good. In fact, with item opening the prostatic urethra, if the patient is also passing urine, just like the same principles like a urethral stricture, where you open up the stricture and remove the catheter after 24 or 48 hours, if you allow the patient to pass urine, that stricture, whatever the internal urethrotomy you did, will stay open. And um, similarly, this ITIN work will be better if patient passes urine via naturalis. But uh, the problem is the storage symptoms. Because of the tip of the ITIN irritating the bladder, he will have that uh, persistent prostatitis-like feeling and storage symptoms of urgency and frequency and maybe nocturia. So patient will benefit from taking tamsulosin, solifinacin or mirabigron. There are some surgeons who use small dose of prednisolone steroids and NSAIDs like parastamol, ibuprofen. So whatever the best possible cocktail for the patient to tide through that five to seven days period. Once the patients are nicely motivated, they are quite happy to tolerate the procedure. Thank you very much.